what's up guys and you probably remember this smartphone over here. This is the Maze Alpha and we tested it a few months ago and came away very impressed with its huge potential and even huger dimensions. So today, today we have the successor of the smartphone. This is the Maze Alpha X. And crazy awesome naming convention aside, in a lot of ways this is an even more exciting smartphone than the original. It is a refined version of the device and yes, whilst the original was very impressive, refinement is exactly what we do need. So let's crack it open and see what we got. Okay, so the outer packaging itself to look at is pretty middle of the line. It doesn't feel super high-end, but it's not bad either. It has noticeably got a completely different form factor to the packaging of the original Alpha, not necessarily a bad thing. Sliding the main compartment out, the first thing you're gonna see is the smartphone packaged in a protective plastic layer. And taking that off, the tray underneath it can be pulled outwards. And inside we've got a pretty plain looking USB Type-C cable and a charging brick. And it's all remarkably bland, it almost looks generic as if it was unbranded and the company just sort of slapped their name on the front. And this is kind of echoed throughout the unboxing experience, it feels a little bit rushed in a sense. Even the SIM ejector tool is just kind of lying there in the box, it isn't in a holder, it isn't in a particular place, it's just kind of there. What was a really nice touch is that even though I was just expecting an instruction manual in this little box, we actually have a tempered glass screen protector, which have not only a higher level of strength than a plastic one, but also a higher level of transparency. And then the smartphone itself, covered in this protective film, which we're now going to take off and have a look at the phone for the first time. Now before I tell you what I think about the Maze Alpha X, it would be quickly worth recapping what I said about the Maze Alpha. I thought the Maze Alpha was a fantastic value smartphone. For significantly under $200, you could get a giant 6-inch 1080p display, which looked really, really good. You were getting an octa-core processor, loads of storage, and 4 or 6 gigabytes of RAM, which made it a really fast experience. And not only that, a 4,000 mAh battery, which pushed the battery life to about two days if you were conservative. My only two problems with it were first of all that it was extremely bulky, and also that these dual cameras didn't actually serve as two cameras. They were kind of fake dual cameras, more for aesthetic purposes than anything else. And now with the Maze Alpha X, both of these complaints have been addressed. So the question is, is it the perfect budget smartphone? Okay, so the first thing you're probably going to notice is the Maze Alpha has been trimmed down in almost every dimension. It is slightly shorter, much narrower, and also as a result quite a bit lighter too. Don't get me wrong, it's still a very much heavy smartphone at over 200 grams, but the combination of these factors does make it noticeably more comfortable to hold. Furthermore, whilst the original Maze Alpha has a plain black glass finish, which did feel pretty great, it has been revamped here. It's been given a reflective coat of paint, which doesn't dramatically change how the phone looks or feels on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's a nice touch. Now, Maze Mobile did also claim that this phone has some sort of extra resistance against fingerprints. That I did not find during my testing. Alright, moving on to something perhaps even more interesting. While side by side, the Alpha X is so much smaller than the original Alpha that it looks like the phone's younger brother, they both actually share the same 6 inch display size. But the Alpha X pulls ahead in two ways. It is a taller, narrower 18 to 9 aspect ratio, and it has a slightly higher resolution. And whilst both devices have a similarly sized bezel going around all three sides, the chin of the phone has been significantly reduced, giving the new phone a screen to body ratio of just under 80%, which is pretty good. It doesn't quite hit the upper echelons reached by the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2, for example, but it's close enough to still look impressive. Now, here's something you've probably never seen before. Whilst the original Maze Alpha sported a dual camera setup, its successor, the Alpha X, actually only has a single camera. But this makes a lot of sense. First of all, and primarily because the dual camera on the Maze Alpha was not actually a dual camera. And everything here has been swapped out. The Maze Alpha X actually produces far less saturated colours, which you may or may not like, that's a bit of a personal preference thing, but the detail is definitely slightly higher. The company on some of its marketing material does claim a 2 times optical zoom, but I assure you that does not actually exist. What is great though, something I really liked about the original Maze Alpha, is that gigantic battery, and this has been very much retained. So with a 3,900 mAh capacity on the Alpha X, you're still looking at about two full days of use. That's awesome. Okay, so you're probably aware with a lot of smartphones that these three on-screen navigation buttons do significantly tear into your screen real estate. Now, a lot of phones which have front-facing fingerprint scanners will get around this by allowing the fingerprint scanner to act as your back, menu, and your home button. One thing in the software here that I found just completely bizarre was the fact that you can only ever enable two of those commands at any one time, which means that you actually have to have the navigation bar at the same time as that home button. 
The Alpha X brings some other changes as well. For example, the original Alpha had flat corners, whereas they are now curved. But if we zoom into that, there's actually also a little bit of a problem. To achieve this effect, the company has actually switched off a few of the pixels in each of the corners to create the shape, but in doing so have actually ended up creating jagged looking corners which just does not happen with higher end phones that have a similar aesthetic to them. It's not a deal breaker, but it definitely does take a few points of polish away from it. There are also some pretty confusing decisions made with regard to the software. Whilst it's great the phone is running a near stock version of Android Nougat, some of the icons here are a throwback to many generations ago. It doesn't really make sense. Spec-wise, the phone is pretty great. We've got a Helio P25 octa-core, we've got 6GB of RAM and 64GB of internal storage minimum, with room for microSD cards. So that's the Maze Alpha X, a phone that takes you in a lot of different directions, but at the same time as being quite incohesive, it is still nonetheless impressive. The company has somewhat addressed the issues present in the original Maze Alpha, and for that it should be credited. But at the same time, it's still not a perfect phone, and it introduces a couple of issues on its own. Thanks a lot for watching guys, my name is Aaron, this is Mr Who's The Boss, and I'm signing out.